anyway. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Robert Pitt. I am an accountant. Please don't let that discourage you from listening for the next uh, hour or so. So what we're going to cover off on today is planning for profit growth in 2017. So hopefully what we're going to do today is going to be an interactive session. So what you'll need to do is you've got pens and paper in front of you. Uh, hopefully you brought along a profit and loss and a calculator with you. So we're actually going to be doing some sums today. And hopefully what you'll take away from today is a new perspective on how to budget and forecast in your business for the next 12 months. Okay, so we'll uh, get straight into it. Okay, so what is profit? Anyone got any idea of what profit is? Cream on the top. Any other views? Money in your pocket. Sorry? Money in your pocket. Money in your pocket? Anyone else? We've got a bit of a shy bunch here today. <laughs> no. You've had <laughs> No other views on what profit might be? Beer tokens. Sorry? Beer tokens. Beer tokens? <laughs> How do we get profit? By making sales. Making sales? And then taking off the expenses. Yep. Cost of sales. And cost of sales, yep. So sales less less our costs. That's our uh, accounting way of doing things. Okay. So sales less expenses equals profit. So profit there is a result. Okay. However, what if we thought of profit rather than a result, we turn it on its head. And we actually think of profit as part of the formula. So profit plus our expenses equals our sales. So a few puzzled looks looking at me there. Somebody once told me, uh, I've run this workshop quite a few times and I asked what profit was and somebody said, what's left over? And quite often business owners have that mentality. Profit is what's left over at the end of the day after sales and we pay all our employees and all our suppliers and we've got some money left over for us and that's what our profit is. So what we're going to cover this afternoon is, let's actually think of profit as a target, something to actually aim for. And what we're going to do today is go through an exercise that will help you to do that. Any questions on that? A few puzzled people, so hopefully we'll uh, make you look a less, little less puzzled as we go through. Okay, so who's done a budget before? Yep, so how would you do your budget? Uh, we'll get your sales, one column, costs, fixed costs. Yep, so what, where was your starting point for that? So did you start with a blank piece of paper and write down the numbers? Yeah, basically a spreadsheet and um, we'll get what, what my objective was for each day. And yep, sales okay. Uh, so did you, before you started writing down those numbers, did you look at anything else, say last year's figures, to give you a guide as to... Yeah, basically you use your experience and yep. previous results, you might even look at examples of other businesses that are the same business. Okay, excellent. Who else has done a budget before as well? Yep, so how would you go about doing yours? Same thing, just use previous year's data. Yep. Okay, uplifted by a little bit for sales and trimmed some costs where we thought we could and then we got the profit at the end of the day. So typically what, we, what I find is that when we budget this way, we lock ourselves into a cycle and we're only ever going to get marginal increases to profitability or marginal increases to, to the growth of the business. So, I think that there's a better way to actually go about the budgeting process.
Okay, so as you saw before, we had profit plus expenses equals sales. So if we actually start with profit, and we think about what does profit actually mean to us? Because of profit, it makes these things possible. And it's different for everyone. I was just going to say that because it's not everyone who looks at an amazing holiday making profit could be investing in better machinery for your business. Yeah. Could be reinvesting in machinery, it could be donating to charity, it could be buying a farm to retire on, it could be whatever it is for you, but actually generating a profit that achieves your personal goals. So rather than accepting a figure, maybe what we need to do is come up with a figure that we need to make these things possible and then work backwards from there. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to start with profit. So we're actually going to work out what profit do we want or need in our business to achieve what we want to achieve. So you've all got some worksheets in front of you. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to work out what that number is. So, how much profit does your business need? We need to pay rent or pay the mortgage. We need to feed and clothe our family. We need to put away some money into superannuation, maybe save up for a holiday or a kid's education or something along those lines. Take some holidays and we of course need to pay some tax as well. So what I'd like to do now is spend five minutes. So on this section one sheet here, what I want you to do is to write down a list of these things. What are the things that you need to spend money on in your personal life that needs to be funded out of the business? Now you don't need to come up with exact amounts, but rough, rough guidelines if possible. So just jot down a few things, put some numbers beside them, and we'll start to add them up. Yearly, weekly, monthly? Yearly. So put down yearly figures. If you want to put down weekly or monthly, then times them by 52 or 12 to get to a yearly figure. Okay. So what we've gone through there is added up all of the things that would make up what we want our profit to represent. All the things that we need to spend or save for or, or do in our personal lives. And that's the figure of profit that we need. But uh, so we've got our total there, but that's not the end of it. <coughs> Taxman takes his cut as well. So obviously, everybody's circumstances are, are different. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll stick in there. If you look at the tax app, let's put in thirty percent. It's a good rough guide as an average rate of tax across most people's taxable incomes. But uh, obviously, once you know your, your actual average rate of tax, you should put, pop that in there because it will depend uh, on individual circumstances. But let's put tax at 30%. So what we need to do is you need to divide the total you've got there by 0.7. And that will give you your pre-tax profit at the bottom. And then the difference between those two is your tax. So that first total that we got was the after-tax profit. So we then need to gro gross that up to get our pre-tax profit. So has everyone been able to get that? Yep, so our total there so the total of all your expenses will add up to a figure. Yeah. We're going to do tax at 30%. Okay. 
which means we're going to divide the total figure. So let's say that figure was $100,000. Let's divide that $100,000 by 0.7. And then the result of that will give you your pre-tax profit. So if our tax rate is 30%, that means that our total there is 70% of our pre-tax profit. So we divide by 0.7 to, to gross it up to the pre-tax figure. So if the tax rate was 40%, we'd divide by 0.6. Okay, so has everyone got a pre-tax profit figure? Yep, see some nods there? A couple of people still using their calculator? I didn't bring mine, I have to use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Okay, so what we've worked out is we've worked out what our profit, what we'd like our profit to be. We've grossed that up for tax. So we've then worked out what our pre-tax profit needs to be. Okay, so the next step then is adding our expenses. Okay, so what are our wages and salaries and on costs? So now what I'd like you to do is go to section two. And this is where your last year's profit and loss is going to help as a guide. So what I want you to do now is to list down your expenses of the business. So stick in your overhead expenses only. If you're, uh, if you're a retailer or a wholesaler and you buy and sell goods, don't worry about the purchases at this stage. We'll cover that a little later on. So just your overheads, uh, employment costs, uh, premises expenses, uh, computer IT, communication. Not sure what that one's supposed to represent. <laughs> so, uh, administration, insurance, all those sorts of things. So we can list them all just put the Yep, so you can, you can list them individually there if you want to, if they're going to change, but if you don't think they're going to change too much from last year, you can just use the total from last year and then maybe add a few variances that you, uh, that you might have. But I encourage you not just to grab last year's bottom line and write that in, actually go through and have a look at those expenses. And if some need to go up and some need to go down, let's just do that during this part. If you can get to a total then for your overhead expenses, and what we're gonna do now is if you can go on to section three, you need to take the total from the bottom of each of the first two pages and put them in the sections at the top of page three. So the pre-tax profit, we've, we've used different wording there, we should have kept that the same, but your pre-tax profit is your profit before tax. So that figure at the bottom of page one needs to go at the top of page three. And then the second number there is the figure from the bottom of page two. Okay, so what you want to then do is you want to add those two numbers together, your profit before tax and your overheads, and that will then give you a gross profit figure. So we're taking the pre-tax profit or profit before tax from page one, entering in the first label, we're then taking our overhead expenses, which are on page two, putting that in the second label there when they're adding those two numbers together and that will equal our gross profit. So has everyone got a gross profit figure? Yep, quite a few nods. 
Okay, now the next part's a little tricky and it will depend on whether or not you have cost of sales or not. Okay, so this is where you're going to need your profit and loss from the prior year. And what you're looking at is if you have some cost of sales, we need you to work out a quick formula to then uplift our gross profit to get a sales target. So if you take your sales figure from the prior year, or your profit and loss that you've got there, so actually sorry, what we want to do is take our gross profit figure and we want to divide that figure by the sales figure. So I've got a profit and loss here, it might be a little hard for everyone to see. We've got our sales as the top line here, we've then got a cost of goods sold figure there and then we've got a gross profit figure here. So we want to take that gross profit figure and we want to divide it by the sales figure. So if you can't see those numbers on your profit and loss, just sing out and I'll come point them out for you. What does that number give you? That will give you a, uh, it'll give you a percentage, which is point something. Can you say the number? Yeah. Can you say it again? What numbers are you uh, So you need to take your gross profit number on your profit and loss statement yeah. and divide it by the sales figure. And you should then get a result point something. If it's greater than one, <laughs> then, then, uh, then we've got an issue. <laughs> uh, something's not quite right. But um, so. Uh, so the sales figure is based on the QRN information? Yes. Which you have from the previous year? Yep. So that's. So if you don't have that? Uh, <laughs> so you, you, you can make up a number for now, but you will need to, to, to fulfil the exercise properly, you will need your last year's figures just as a, uh, as a guide as to what your gross profit is going to be. So if we're taking this gross profit from this page, we're using that? No, no, so you're taking, so these two figures are from your profit and loss statement, not from the figures we've just done. Is it based on a cash or accrual? Uh, an accrual. So if you've got an accrual profit and loss and a cash profit and loss, throw the cash one away. We want to work on the accrual one. So generally with a gross profit margin, even as the business grows, that margin will generally remain fairly static. Um, unless, of course, you drastically change your business model. So if you, are, if you had a business, uh, so you're, well, you're in a fitness business, so if you had, say, running a, um, a, a gym and you had full-time employees and they were servicing the customers and doing all those sorts of things, but then you switched to a model and said, no, I'm going to use contractors who will just pay by the hour for the face-to-face -face time they have with customers, all of a sudden you've shifted from overheads to, uh, to cost of sales and that would change your, your gross profit percentage. Okay, so if you have had a shift in your business, then the numbers may be a little misleading. But again, the exercise still remains the same. You would just need to rejig the numbers. Okay? So what we're trying to take you through today is a process that you can follow uh, regardless of how often the numbers are updated because you can just go back and revisit it. Okay? So has everyone got a gross profit percentage? So it should be point something, something, something. Okay? Excellent. So let's write that down uh, on, uh, in that section three, just in that white section between gross profit and sales. So what we then want to do is we now want to take our gross profit figure on this sheet. So the gross profit figure that you calculated, I want you to take that number and then I want you to divide by that percentage figure that you just, so if your gross profit's a million dollars, and this figure is 0.5, then you would take the million dollars, divide by 0.5, and that gives you your sales figure. So what we're calculating here is a sales figure that we need to target to cover the overheads of the business and the cost of goods sold of the business, and to make the profit that will help you to achieve the things that you want to achieve in your life outside of the business. Okay, so has everyone got a sales figure? 
Yep. Okay. So this is the sales figure that we need to achieve to be able to get the results that we want to get. Okay, so rather than accepting whatever's left over or whatever's in our pocket or, or beer tokens, this is the figure that we want to, to actually achieve the things we want to achieve. However, how does it compare to our sales from last year? I I'm, I'm think I'm going to make a fairly safe bet and say that the sales figure we just calculated is either a little bit or a lot higher than what last year's was. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. So what we need to think about is of the overhead expenses that we put in, is it possible to achieve that sales figure with those overheads? If not, we need to go back and revisit the calculation. Can we service that many sales from our current location? Can we service that many sales with that much staff? With that many cars on the road? So we need to go back and revisit it because that may be our sales target, but if it's not achievable with the overheads that we've got, then the sales number is going to incre increase again because we're going to need to factor in some more costs in those overheads. Okay. So it's a bit of a circular process that we may have to go through before we get to the eventual number that we're looking for. But quite often, they're not going to equal. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we've got a gap and we need to fill that gap. And this is the key of what we're going to do today. So looking at it, we say, okay, well, we need to increase our sales by, and we've all got a number now, because all we need to do is take the sales figure on here, compare it to the sales figure on our profit and loss, and there's a growth figure that we need to achieve. So how do we do that? What are the things that we're going to need to do to change in our business to be able to get there? And it's going to be different for every business. But now that you've got a figure that you need to target, you'll have a better idea about what those things are. If you've got a big gap, then increasing your prices by 5% is not going to get you there. If you've got a little gap, then maybe something as simple as that might do. But we've got it quantified as to what we need to achieve. Is everyone clear on what we've gone through so far? Any questions? So, what are some of the things that we can do to bridge that gap? Increase turnover. Increase turnover. So, how do we do that? What are some of the ideas? Let's just throw them out there. Advertise. Advertise. So, so what are we advertising for? New customers? Yep. So we can get new customers through the door. Increase your prices. Increase your prices. Promote referrals. Promote referrals again. Another way to get new customers through the door? Incentives for current customers, like ways that they can upgrade whatever they're paying for currently. That yep. They pay a bit more or something else. Yep. So deliver more services to the same customers. So maybe you've got customers and you've got a wide range of services, but you're only, they're only selecting certain ones. Maybe if we sell more services to those existing customers, we can increase our sales. What else could we do? Wages. Sorry? Wages or decrease the number of staff. Yep. So we could reduce some of our costs, which changes the formula. What else could we do? Yep. So new products or services. So you've got an existing client base there, you can potentially sell different items to them or services to them. So there are lots of ideas out there as to what you can do in relation to lifting it up. But the key thing is 
you've got a target in mind, so you know what you need to achieve, it's then going about and actually getting it done. Okay, any questions? No? Okay. This is my favourite slide of the whole lot. I am an accountant and I do like my numbers, but this is my favourite slide. Locus of control. So, at the end of the day, this comes down to you. If a change is going to happen, you're going to make that change happen. Now, we've all got busy lives, we're going to leave here, potentially forget about what we've learnt, or say, that was nice, I feel good for the next hour, but then I get back into my normal life and everything just flies out the window. But if you're going to make a change, you're the one that's going to have to make it, and you're going to be accountable for yourself. Okay? So, you know, the economy might be bad. The banks may be giving you a hard time. Customers may be a pain in the ass. Competition might be tough, but at the end of the day, what can you control? You. Exactly. You, your business. So if there's a barrier in place, what do you need to do to overcome that? We're all time poor. We've all got limited resources. But what are we going to do to overcome those things to make this happen? So what I'd like you to do now is, what is the next step? So you've listened to me talk, I've taken you through a process and we've come up with a number, a scary number for some. What is your first step? What are you going to do when you leave here that will help you to move towards that sales goal? So what I'd like you to do now is to have a think about that and I'd like you to write it down. What is your next step? If that one was easy for you, what's the next one? And this has got to be an action. This has got to be something that you're actually going to do. So has everyone got something written down? Okay. When are you going to do it by? Well, no, no, seriously, when, when are you going to get it done by? Write down the date. Is it next week, next month? So what I'd like you to do is write down a date. If we say this week, this month, this year, they're very open-ended. If we write down the 31st of January, we know exactly what we're talking about. So write down a date. Give yourself plenty of time to get it done. It's a big task, let's not say by Sunday. So has everyone got it written down and everyone got a date? So how can we hold ourselves accountable to that action and that date? What can we do? Stick it on the fridge. What else can we do? Set reminders in the telephone. Set reminders. What else? On the whiteboard. On the whiteboard. Discuss it at staff meetings. Yep. So let other people know. Okay. Now I've taken you through a very, or I've taken you through very, very quickly what is normally a much longer process. 
but hopefully it gives you an idea about the mindset that you need to have when you're thinking about growth in your business. So rather than just the same old, same old, rather than adding an uplift to last year, or just setting some budgets, let's actually have a look at what profit do you need or want to achieve in your business, and then building the business model up to actually figure that out, or to get there. And then once you do, once you know the gap, put in place some plans, some ideas, write down some actions, put some dates on them, and hold yourself accountable to those actions. If you don't get them done, then just etch out the date a little bit, write down the date, another date, and then try and hit that second one. Share that because there's nothing like being accountable to other people to getting stuff done. Any questions? No? Well, I'm going to hang around for a few minutes afterwards. Thank you for coming along today and listening to me uh, prattle on for the last hour. Uh, the legal stuff, this is not specific advice, it's general information only. Etc. 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 If you have any too, if you have any questions, you'll be too shy to sort of sing out. Come up and see me afterwards. And uh, as I said, thank you for coming along.